Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, the world away. And we're now starting stage or issue eight, which is 17, 18, 19, and 20 of IXO Collections Build the Peugeot 205 1.9 GTI. Now, before we get into the magazine, lots to do in this one. We're going to be actually mounting the suspension to uh, the front. That's why I've got everything here to the main frame that we had there. We're also going to be working on the steering rack. Um, I've showed you some of the free gifts that we get, which we get the cap and we get the uh, plate at the moment. As a matter of fact, let's put the cap on. There we go, as if by magic, the cap appears. <laughs> but we've got some more free gifts that have uh, come in this build. Let me just show you what they are. Uh, this is brilliant. We've got a Chrome 205 little aerial on top there it's got the wing mirrors it's very detailed look it's got all the uh makings on the bottom looking just like that one of the free gifts i do love that and uh in the post yesterday i received this brilliant light check that out it's got the ixo collections on it uh loads of leds in here and this is the button so when i turn it on it is bright and this really does help in this build when you're trying to get into those fiddly areas because as i said before because everything's black it's hard to see the shadows of where the holes are where you're screwing into but this is perfect uh, another free gift from ixo collection so if you want to get this for yourself i put the link down here to ixo collections you can get this and start all the way from pack one if you haven't seen any of my videos before i've put a link up here as well uh, just to the playlist so you can see where i started with this right up to where we are now so uh, the first thing i'm going to do is put in the steering rack but let me just quickly show you the book and uh, show you what we're going to be doing now once again the magazines are all in french but all the instructions are online at ixocollections.com uh, if i just turn to where we're going as you can see we are starting the steering rack uh, brilliant instructions not only does it tell you how to put things together but then they have a review at the end to show you where everything should go then we've got the uh, anti-roll bar here I'm going to be putting that in place we're going to need all the bits that we've worked on last time. We're going to have a bit of reprieve in stage three. That'd be 17, eight, that'd be issue uh, stage 19, where we're going to be putting the tire in, which means we're going to need some boiling water for that. And then in stage 20, everything comes together. We've got to put everything in the vehicle. So it's going to look just like that at the end, which is really impactful, isn't it? I am absolutely loving this build. And the reason being, because A, I used to have one, and B, there's so much metal in it. Even the small details on the engine are made of metal, which is absolutely brilliant. So as I said, the instructions are in English online, if you're watching in English. Uh, so I'm going to be following them online here. But without further ado, let's get cracking. Now, the first thing we need to start doing is assembling the steering rack and the first piece we need looks just like this this is labeled 17b uh, this is metal once again everything seems to be metal in this uh, build but it's absolutely brilliant and then we've obviously got the rack here which has got the teeth on this side that's going to need to fit into this section like that so the teeth are facing up there we then need to close off the steering column by putting the other side on. That's just going to go over the lugs that you can just see at the top there. We're going to line them up. So that's going to go on just like this. There we go. And we're going to hold all of that into place with AM screws just into the bottoms here. So I've got these here. And I know you're never going to get tired of me saying it. They're metal. I'm going to drop them in a little bit of oil just to help these go in. So that's the first one. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then we put the second one in place. Bit of oil just into that side there. And there we go, that's all into place. It is still able to revolve around in there. So if you uh, if it did move inside, don't worry too much. You can move that afterwards. Now the next section, the two shafts here, we've got the pinion shaft and the intermediate shaft. And we need to join these together. So we've got the universal joint, which is very tiny looking just like that and what we're going to do is attach it just to the intermediate shaft here with am screws one in this side one in the other side so i've lined that up there i'm just going to get one side in first i've got one side in there just at the moment just to hold that in i'll get the other side in then i'll tighten that up I'm not going to lie to you this is very very fiddly but you do want to make sure that they go in straight so that's one side in i'm just going to straighten out this top one there we go put that all the way in so there we go we got those two sections in there we're going to do exactly the same for the other side 
and that's basically just going to be going on top exactly like we did just like that with am screws that's the first one gone in absolutely fine again i'm not over tightening it until i've got the other side in and there's the second one make that nice and tight that side and tight that side now you should have movement in it it shouldn't be too loose so just going to tighten these ones up a little bit more and this one so the way i say it it should be able to hold its own when you shake it but obviously it should still have movement when you move it with your hands so that's the linkages done now this is going to be quite difficult so we're going to do it in one move we're going to be putting the steering column just with the uh, cog end here into this section so it's going to sit kind of like that in there like that so this is going to go kind of like this <laughs> it, oh it's tricky so what i'm going to do is i'm going to line this up probably best to get that where you want it first put this where it's going to go so that's going to go in just like that and then you want to put the steering column in between all of that so as you can see that's all in place and when i spin this you can see that it's moving freely on its own there now i just need to make that so it's nice and smooth which it is and i'm going to hold this in place with a couple of screws we've got a bm screw going in here and a bm screw just going into the hole there so i'll put this one in first i think line it up make that nice and tight and then we've got one more to put in which is going to hold this other side in here just like that and again make sure that's nice and tight so that's now going nowhere so we've got this now interlinked so as you can see once that's in you should be able to turn the steering column and the rack should move just like that a little bit of a fiddly section but when it's done pretty rewarding to say that's all metal uh, that's all there is to do in that stage now we've got absolutely loads to do with the suspension so the first thing i'm going to do is take out the anti-roll bar here looking just like that now this bit is plastic just so you know and the first thing we're going to do is holding it this way around so we're going to be putting the link arms underneath here and connecting them with dp screws just from the top now they're going into plastic so i don't have to worry at all about uh putting these in oil but i am just going to line that up and put the screw in here make sure that goes in straight that looks good and then tighten that up and then we're going to do exactly the same just on the other side there now you want to make sure these are really tight so what i'm going to do is just use my duck build pliers just to hold that in place to stop it turning while i just tighten that up as much as i can get it that's the first one see that's no wobble in there at all and that's got loads of wobble in so once again i'll hold that into place and then turn it here And there we go see both in nice and tight we now need to work on the subframe and have it this way round. this is what we worked on in the last pack and this is just going to go just on the top there between the two holes that we can see there and there and there and there because we're actually going to be putting a little attachment on top of that to keep that into place and those are very tiny they look just like that so i'll put them over the top one this side and one the other side there and they're going to be held in with am screws so remember this whole section is metal so i have just dropped a little bit of oil in there just to help me get them screws in so i'll do one side show you what that looks like and then we'll do the other side bit of oil and that's the first hinge bracket in so that's going to keep that into place no problems at all there i'll do the other side and when that's in that should look just like that still able to move around in there but obviously it's kept into place by those hinges now the last thing we want to do is just cap off these sections here and here with these caps like we did in the last stage they're just going to go into the holes here and just hold in place there so we've got one for this side 
one for the other side they should be facing out like that now the BM screws is actually put in from the bottom there not the top so we put turn it over screw that home nice and tight and there we go that keeps that into place do the same on the other side here in like that grab a BM screw drop it in a tiny bit of oil turn it over and then put it in through that side just there make sure that's nice and tight I could put that to one side because we're going to be working on another linkage here which means we need this section here and we need to put one of these linkages here the joint just into the side here exactly like we did last time it's going to be held from either side with AM screws so I've just put one in this is the second one going in here make sure they're tight on both sides there we go and that's the linkage in place like that we're going to bring over the steering column that we worked on last time here uh, that linkage is just going to go into the top onto this section just here so we just offer these sections together like that once again we're going to be putting am screws just into the top and the bottom there so i've lined that up there's a screw for the top again not put it in all the way just enough so i can line it up put one in the bottom here and then tighten them up again not too tight that there's no movement in this at all but just enough till it can control that joint there from both ways and then as you can see we can still operate the steering no problems at all now we're going to be putting the track rods on now the easiest way to differentiate between them is just look the bend and look where this indent is here this will be 18c this is going to be going on this side nearest to the column here so this is going to be going underneath this section just there and it's going to be held in from this side here with a cm screw but we do need to put a boot on this this is what the boots look like they go on this way so we're just going to push that in there till it goes all the way to the end like that and then we'll get this in place with the CM screw. Put that in some oil, and the CM screw is gonna be attached from this side down onto the bottom piece there. Now, if it's not going in smooth, take it out, then keep screwing it in. Half a turn, take it out, half a turn, screw it back in. Until you're happy. Until you're happy you've got that in, and once again, I've cut myself. <laughs> every one of these builds i cut myself at least it's in a different place this time let me get a plaster for that well now that was typical of me i've got a plaster on but as you can see that's both ends now in uh, it does take a lot of time you probably need some oil on there but you see i make mistakes so you don't have to but uh it is going to take a lot of screwing you want to make sure the screws are quite tight in there as well uh but then all we need to do is take the boot put that over the top just like that on both sides uh and that will just reinforce that joint there as well so in the end it should look pretty much just like that now we need to take the brake components or the caliper uh, things here now you need to know what side you're actually working on as you can see here this is labeled l so that's the left side the other one's going to be the right side uh, the reason for knowing that is is because on the car here where the steering column is uh, this side is going to be the left of the car this side's going to be the right of the car so that's an easy way so you can line them up but we need to take this tab here and that's just going to go over the top here and that's going to be held in with one of the screws which i'm just going to get together here put that in make sure it's really tight it should be able to hold its own weight but it should still be able to move and when that's complete they both should look like that now we need to bring over the subframe and we're going to be putting this whole section here just onto the two points that we can see here and here the two sections just here are what's going to connect to it but at the same time where we've got these rods going up here they are going to connect to the top of these sections that you could just see here so i'm going to line these sections up first i think that's one in do the same just on the other side here that's two in and then i'll line up these tabs in the middle 
So it should kind of look just like that. What I'm going to do first is put the BM screws in to keep these in place. And we'll screw the first one in. Make that nice and tight. When this is centered on here, then you can just adjust the boots that we've got there. Put the next BM screw in, bit of oil. Line that up there, put that into place as well. Very, very detailed section. I think the only pain it is, these are all in place, but these brake lines keep coming out. So uh, once again, I'll just quickly put them in. One on this side and the other one just on this side here. Perhaps I might glue them in actually. But uh, put the boot on as well. But there we go, looking good. Still needs a lot of reinforcing. Whoops, and they popped out as well, but don't worry too much about that. They will sit in when it's in the vehicle. Now to hold the brakes in place, we're gonna be putting them over these sections that we can just see here, and the other one on the other side. If I just turn this round on the close-up camera, just here. So I'm gonna put the brake just into those sections there. One. And two. That's the shock, absolutely. Keeps calling it the brake. Uh, and it's gonna be secured from the other side with some JM screws. Now they're the ones that I've got the little flange on. Let me show you what that looks like. Looking like that. Drop that in some oil. Gonna be a little bit fiddly, I'm sure. But uh, turn it around and we'll get this in. Just to this side at the bottom here. Once again, get this in as tight as you can get it. And when that's in, that should look just like that. You can do the same on the other side. And when that's in, that should look just like that. You see how fiddly this is? But God, it's looking good. And then to keep these link arms into place, we just have these little clips. They're sort of circular clips that we just take one off here. And we push that over the top to stop that falling out. I'll get one in, show you what that looks like. Just like that. As you can see, that's no longer coming out. Do the same on the other side. Push it through the uh, section there. Just checking that's gone in okay. Which it has, and now they're in place. Boy, was that a stage, hey? But there you go. That's all there is to do in that stage. Now stage 19 is exactly like we've worked on before. What we're gonna be doing, got a couple of bits here as well. Let's just get them out. We're gonna be putting the rim inside the wheel but to do that we're going to need to put some boiling water on the wheel so i'll get some boiling water together and we'll come back to that there we go i've got the uh time i'm going to drop that into the boiling water there we'll leave that for about a minute now it is worth noticing that we do have a, a hub and a little washer in there we're going to want to keep that safe so i'm going to keep them in this section here with the lid when that's done put that to one side because i am going to need a cloth which has seen better days since the ET build and then I'm pretty much a dab hand at this now or I should be all we're gonna do is fish it out and push this in as quick as we possibly can one two three and four quick as that the amount of tires I've put in on my time <laughs> we weren't gonna have a problem there but there we go that is stage 19 complete now stage 20 is going to be pretty difficult because we're actually going to be putting everything we've made then into the front chassis of the vehicle where the engine is. So uh, I have got this foam jig that I've made myself because we do need to turn things upside down. Uh, but we're going to start with the ignition coil. So the first thing we need, just this section looking just like that. And in this side here, we are just going to be putting the ignition coil. It's a tiny little thing this is. And it is a push to fit. So this is just going to go in just like that there. We're then going to be putting this back plate onto the cover here, just like that. And that's going to be secured in just here with an AP screw. So I've got one of those here, put that in just like that. And then from the coil here, we're going to have a HT lead. That's just going to come out the bottom, just into this section here. Push that all the way down just like that. And now we're gonna fit this into the chassis of the vehicle. 
So that's what it's looking like at the moment. And this section here actually fits just over the two points that you can see here and here. So this is gonna go kind of like that, but we do need to connect this lead under the distributor afterwards. It's probably best to look at the pictures for that to show exactly how that goes. In the meantime, to hold this into place, we're just going to use a BM screw. So I'm just going to hold that with my hand there and put a BM screw just down the top here. Line it up. There is actually a lug on the other side that can help you get this in. And I'm very much aware that this is very difficult to film. But there you go. That's in. Make that nice and tight. And then look at the pictures to see where I actually connect this under the underside of the distributor there. And when that's in, it should look just like that. Now this is where I'm gonna take the engine, turn it upside down, just put it in this foam thing I've got here just to protect everything, just like that. Because what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be putting these drive shaft extensions that we made into the last pack in. Now just so you know, they do have a difference. One's got a thicker end, one's got a thinner end. One's gonna be going into the silver side here, the other one's just going to go onto the other side. I don't know if you can see that here, just there. Probably best to look at the pictures if you can't see uh, a difference there. But the larger end is going to go into this silver side over here, just like that. And the smaller end is just going to go into the other side over here, just like that. Now I am pushing these boots just down because I need to have these sections exposed because we're about to drop everything that we've done here over the top of it. Now holding this this way round, basically these sections here and here, we want to line up with these sections here and here, and the mounts of the engine are going to line up with the mounts just down the bottom. Put the strut mounts in, just down behind there, and then pretty much move it forward is probably the way to go. Just like that. Make sure everything's lined up in there. Oh, one of my... Uh, drive shafts has come out now these drive shafts are going to be fitting let me just take this out again just to show you where these go the ball joints on these shafts here are going to just fit into the section that we can just see here it's probably again best to look at the picture but uh, i'm going to get this in and show you what that looks like making sure i'm not pinching any wires here but they are in exactly where they need to be so first thing I'm gonna do is just hold this section in here. And to do that, we need BM screws. So there's gonna be four BM screws going into this section. I'll just drop this into some oil. That's one. One over this side. Two, three, and four. Now we've got two more to put in down this side, one down here, one down the other side. Once again, BM screws. So that's all together, six screws put in, two here, two here, one here, and one this side here. All I need to do then, probably best to show you on this camera, is just to put these boots back over the ball joints to keep them in place. So I'll do that now. Very hard to show you this, unfortunately. And when that's in, check that out. <laughs> it should look just like that. That looks absolutely amazing. I'm so happy with how that looks. Brilliant. All we need to do now is secure the strut mounts just into these top sections here. And once again, they're done with BM screws. So just line up the holes, which I'm just doing here. That looks good. And put the first screw in. That'll pull all the other screws up into place there. So I'll be able to get them in. No problems at all. There's three each side. And when they're in, 
they should look just like that and now these are in nice and secure on both sides and that's pretty much the hardest section done we can put that to one side because we're just going to work on some of the bonnet supports here now these are metal again and all we're going to do is put this section here against this section here and we're going to be driving home a cm screw just through this side here so i'll get that in now the screw does actually go through this side here so what i'll do is i'll put the screw in first and then i'll marry that up with the part which will enable me to start that screwing in there just like that put it down and then screw that all the way in and then we're not going to cut ourselves again uh, we've got another section here looking just like that that's going to go just onto the end of this section and once again it's going to be held in with a cm screw probably best to look at the pictures i'm very much aware that that's hard to see so i've got a cm screw here drop that in some oil then we'll get that in so when that's in it should look just like that they should still be able to move but it shouldn't be uh wobbling around all over the place we're gonna bring over the section we just worked on and this little tab that we just put in here is just going to go into this section just like that there so it's going to be secured in with a cm screw so i've got that here line up put that section in and then drive that one home as well nice and tight because it's going to be supporting the bonnet eventually just like that so now that's looking like that there this is still able as you can see here to lift when we get the bonnet in there we could put that to one side for one final time while we just get these two spacers here and we're just going to attach these mounts to it here and that's done with a an ap screw so basically we take this section here put the mount into the bottom just like that and then an ap screw in this side we're going to do that twice and these are going to become the strut mounts now i know a lot about strut mounts because once upon a time i had to have them both replaced in my hyundai hyundai tray jet I used to have a big seven seater it cost me about 130 pound each side so it wasn't a cheap job but when we've done them just bring them over the strut mounts just go to the top of the struts there we make sure that they put them in so that the screw at the end that we put the screw in is actually facing upwards and that's just going to go in like that that side and like that that side when you push it down it should be able to hold itself in and that's the strut mounts in place now we're not finished yet the last thing we've got to do you remember these we need to put the brake calipers on because guess what we're actually going to put the wheels on so the brake calipers are going to be going on there kind of like that either side and then we're going to put it on its side like this and bring over the tire to the caliper uh, to be honest with you the uh, it's got a shape that goes into the caliper it's probably best actually to put the caliper onto the tire first like this and then marry that up with the section there now this is going to be held in with a km screw remember to put it over the washer that we got in first so screw that and the washer as tight as we can get it all the way into the hub there that's why i'm lying it down just to get a little bit more force on there and the more tight it is the less wobble you're going to have and then just finish that off with the hub over the top we're going to repeat that with the other wheel it should still be able to turn like that but uh, as you can see when they're both done it should look just like this and i'm sure you'll agree that looks absolutely amazing <laughs> really 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 impressive we'll pack this one and uh, as you see when i turn the steering column the wheels turn as well absolutely love this pack brilliant and there you go i absolutely loved pack eight of this <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant build if you want to get this for yourself as i said i've put the uh link down there to ixo collections and you'll be able to start that from pack one and work all your way up to where i am at the moment but uh yeah look let me just give you this for size look look how cool 
That looks absolutely brilliant. Really, really happy with how that build's gone. It has taken over two hours, and obviously I've injured myself again, but uh, I think you're becoming used to that now. But I really do hope you like that video. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed already, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, take care.